Hello everyone, this is Lala, and today I'm going to be talking about Battle of the Sexes, which is season 6 of The Challenge. I watched this beforehand a few weeks ago, but I was just watching it just to understand what happened in the season, and now I'm looking at it from a more critical lens, and I do think it is a massive improvement over Battle of the Seasons 1, and definitely a huge improvement over the prior for seasons. I did like that they had an elimination in every single episode and the pacing of the episodes was consistent because they had a format where it would be a challenge and an elimination where I felt like the structure and the formatting in the last season was pretty weak overall. When it comes to the cast, there are definitely a lot of the big names of the time and I'm assuming that many of them were also big names on their real world or world world seasons, but a lot of them ultimately couldn't maintain that on this show, and I felt like there are quite a bit of red t-shirts on the season, which if you watch Survivor, those are essentially people who are given no edit, no character, and are essentially background stand-ins at best. I really liked the strategy of the woman, where it was based off of strategic at times, and it was mainly personal as well, since a lot of the women just didn't like one another, they saw the game differently, and because of that, they sent each other home for ridiculous reasons. The guys had a very simplistic but effective and boring strategy, where the weakest person gets voted out every single time. But I guess because the meta of the challenge wasn't really established yet, where you could flip on the people at the top, and that strategy was only going to be good for the top few people. And we saw how that went out this season. And it caused a lot of the guys to not really have many character moments in the season, and a lot of them are pretty forgettable as well. Despite that, there's a huge increase in drama this season, and it really gets going from the very beginning, and it carries on throughout most of the season. Overall, you definitely do get that party summer stoked vibes, and it is very entertaining, and the location being Jamaica is just near and dear to my heart, and they really executed the beauty of the country on this season. Anyways, it was a fun watch the first time, and it was even more fun this time. Alrighty, so everyone makes their introductions, and Beth is paranoid after being booted first last season, and she's acting like she had no responsibility for being booted first and acting like it was for no reason, which I just find to be very hilarious. And we're finally seeing Jamie and Emily together on TV since they started dating, though they were getting to know one another two seasons ago. Dave is essentially proud of being the first one to be booted in reality TV history from his real world season if I remember correctly, and we have the reunion of Julie and Ayana since season 4, though Melissa calls out Julie for fucking with her money, and apparently the cast do college speaking tours in between seasons to make their money. And this is something that they did in the 90s and early 2000s, and Melissa calls Julie out for getting her to not get booking gigs, and getting her gigs cancelled, since Julie and her mother called event leaders to not cast her by stating that she doesn't sign autographs. It's a lot of interesting hindsight regarding how reality TV was back in the day and how they profited from it, and I believed a few of the cast members, including Melissa, wrote their thoughts about the episodes while it was airing to give some more insight. The top three men and women in each challenge form the inner circle who will vote out a man and a woman, and you apparently can't choose your partner again in another challenge. Julie is worried after her argument with Melissa due to not being able to turn things around in three days to warn people or to warn people to her. Puck decides to get a mullet and James talks about the magnetism of Puck, and Puck talks about pushing people away as a defense mechanism, but he is now a changed man, though his actions in the season, and especially his actions post-show, absolutely say otherwise. Puck and Dave are really getting into it, as Dave states that Puck beats his wife, and Puck spits in Dave's face. Apparently, there was a lot more to the scene, where Dave was fighting with a bunch of people, and he also spit on some of the other women in addition to spending on Puck, so people just thought, okay, the situation was over and done with, and apparently all the allegations against Puck that we now know to be true didn't happen publicly yet or didn't happen yet, so they all believed 
Puck over at Dave. Dave wants to whoop Puck's ass, but after calling the producers, they want to boot Puck, but the entire cast defends Puck. As he mentioned that if he leaves, they all leave, and the production clearly cannot handle that, and it shows how they didn't have control of the reins in a lot of what happened at this point of time in John's history. Puck is arguing with a producer, and there was an agreement where Dave is allowed to spit on Puck, and so much time is being wasted on this when they were supposed to leave, and they are really just holding production back. The first challenge starts, which is called Sergeant Says, where it is clearly just a military boot camp challenge, and they're doing the challenge in Paris. There is a life shield twist of some sort, where whomever wins it can save someone before the vote. The guys are sucking in the challenge because they don't remember the instructions where the women win their challenge, which Amaya and Melissa wins the lifesaver. They and Anissa and Genesis are the inner circle for the women, and Blair and Colin and Jamie and Theo are in the inner circle for the men. Dave ends up arguing with Puck once again about the spitting situation, especially since Puck is campaigning to get him out. Dave rants to Eric and Mark about the situation and decides to quit since he does not want to be voted out. Dave definitely did bring a lot of entertainment to the sh season for the short time that he was there, but he was definitely not meant for the challenge. But I wish he handled himself a bit better, since there would have been more tension amongst the men had he stayed and they would have been very interesting in comparison, as the men were a well-oiled machine throughout the season. Julie knows that her ass is grass with the women who are in the inner circle, especially Melissa, though the other women are discussing booting Emily, partially due to her boyfriend. The women give the lifesaver to Dan for hanging out with them over the last few days, and they also boot Julie from the season. Many of the men mention that the girls made a dumb move, since Julie was a strong competitor, and a lot of the women think that it's also a dumb move to boot Julie, since she would have helped them beat the men, and Ellen really has it out for Melissa now, and all of this is just foreshadowing for how the women would handle the season when it comes to their game playing. It seems like Julie had a similar reputation to Beth, with sabotaging some of the others outside of the house when it comes to money and gigs. Outside of that, I do wish that Julie lasted a bit longer, since she causes mess wherever she goes, but it did start the season off with a bang, and the woman more than made up for her absence with the drama department. A lot of the women have diarrhea, and the guys are feeling good. On the bus ride towards the challenge, the guys talk about how their strategy for the season is that the person with the lowest point will get booted, and they talk about how the woman made a mistake in booting Julie. I do understand their strategy, but this would obviously only work for the men at the top, and it really makes their side more boring, not only throughout this season, but throughout Battle of the Sexes too as well. The challenge is called Dead Man's Drop, which is essentially them swinging upside down from hanging on a bar. Gladys is pregnant, and the producers nowadays would not allow her to be on a season nowadays, and she's five months pregnant at that. But she is told by the host that she can't do the challenge. Latoria knows that he is low on the scale before the challenge, and knows that he's probably screwed after the challenge. The women win the challenge, and Ruthie won the lifesaver, with Ellen and Anne joining her in the inner circle. Colin, Jamie, and Theo are in the inner circle, and Latarian is at the lowest, though he is in the sprint of the or he is the spirit of this season and the guys. Beth spoke to Ruthie beforehand to get the ladder to promise not to send Beth home, but Ruthie doesn't hang out with Beth and doesn't feel obligated to. The women also talk about booting Veronica, since she never made any effort with the woman. Ruthie saves Gladys with the lifesaver, pissing Beth off. Beth and Latarian are voted out of the house. Beth was not as entertaining as she was on the last season, but she's clearly tried to make some sort of effort into improving, but it just didn't matter since she suffered from the same thing Julie did. Latarian was okay throughout the season, and I can see how he was the mascot for the guys, but he just didn't bring much to the table this time around. Puck talks about how his girlfriend and his son are coming to Jamaica, and he wants to get married here, and Mark wants to help officiate it, as he's the only married one. 
Okay, I never knew Mark was married at one point. There was no talk about a wife in his prior seasons, and there is no mention of a wife in future seasons after this. Hell, he gets into quite a few showmances here, and even on All Stars, he talks about his mother, but never any wife. So I'm assuming this marriage didn't last long at all. Puck talks about his wedding to Ellen, and she calls him weird as hell, and she mentions that if he hasn't changed in a decade, something is wrong with him, and he mentions that he is 34, it's currently his birthday, compared to her 24, and he grants to the other guys that he can make her cry in many ways, and honestly, this is just very uncomfortable, now knowing that he does make women cry with his abuse. So, a lot of the women are going through their periods as well, so they don't feel the best right now. The next challenge is called Treehouse, where they have to reassemble the house that they saw earlier, and it's kind of just a mere challenge. The men win the challenge, where Dan and Jamie win the lifesaver, with the inner circle being Colin, Jamie, and Pac. The women perform so poorly in the challenge that the men end up having to help them finish it. The women who are in the inner circle are Anne, Ellen, and Rosie. Colin injured his foot though he still performs very well throughout the season, and Eric is at the bottom, so he knows that he is going home. The women are leaning towards booting Gladys, since she is the worst performing woman and she is pregnant. Ellen is pissed off with Rachel not helping out the other woman, and she's going to remember this, and this is heavy foreshadowing. Puck is giving the lifesaver, and the two people we thought were booted ended up being booted. Gladys being pregnant was an interesting storyline, and she was five months pregnant, which, wow, I'm shocked they let someone in the tri second trimester enter the season pregnant, but she herself did not offer anything to the show, so I'm fine with this being the only season that she did. I don't remember a single thing about Eric J, and this being his only season is not a shock when it comes to how he came off on the season. Ayana and David are becoming close friends, though the show portrays it as some sort of budding showmance, and Puck shows his wife and son to the cast, and it's so crazy that outside contact is so open and allowed like this back in the day. Well, that's how it was. Ellen continues bashing Puck, and it's pretty funny, to be honest. The challenge is called Breath Hold Bungee, which is pretty self-explanatory, and you have to hold it underwater, and I do enjoy the challenge. David knows that he is at the bottom and needs to do well in this challenge to make it through the next round. The men win the challenge with James winning the life shield, with Colin, James, and Jamie making it to the lifesaver with the men. Ruthie, Veronica, and Ellen make it into the inner circle for the women as well. David knows that he is going home, and Gisela knows that she's going home as well. Puck picks another fight with Ellen, who is actually ignoring him this time, and Ayana gets emotional over David going home, where they mention that they will be in contact after the season, though I doubt that happened. Amaya told Ruthie that her cousin is dying, and Veronica does not want to boot Gisela, who is at the bottom, because she was the only one that supported Veronica last season, and doesn't want to stab her in the back. Despite all of this, David and Gisela go home, and James gives his girlfriend Emily the life shield saver. At the end of the episode, Puck and Ellen get into off-camera, where he tells her that he's going to kick her ass, and Ellen feels threatened. Neither one of them did much of note this season, and his showmance with Ayanna was clearly only shown because he was going home in the episode. They do have another season, so it'll be interesting to see what they do on it, and to see if they make more of a mark there than they do here. And Griselda was even less notable this season, especially compared to last season. A topless Anissa shows up with a more confused look with Ellen's Rand and Dan has some great commentary about the situation, as he's mentioning that the guys don't stand up to Puck, since the boys are scared of him, which is honestly pathetic, and Ellen does think that they are cowards, since the guys were there too when this happened. Melissa thinks that the woman should not want to go to the wedding to support it. Rachel and Mark talk about how they don't want to get involved in the situation, and he says that he doesn't think Puck said that to her. More people are talking about the situation, and Puck does not give a fuck whatsoever to even listen to what anyone has to say, which just shows his mentality and pathology overall. Blair is trying to clear up the situation, but Puck is not receptive at all to it. But Ellen is proud that Blair stood up for her. 
The cast is creative in their outfits, with many of them wearing a bunch of leaves as wardrobes for the wedding, and it's very interesting to watch all of this happen, and they even get an officiator to officiate the wedding. All of this is very fun, and they really make Jamaica look more serene. The wedding takes place, and everyone is having a good old ball. There is some dissension with the woman about who needs to be partners, since you can't repeat partners in another challenge, and the conflict between Ellen and Rachel is really growing at this point. Ayana and Amaya argue about how she does not want to be partnered with the latter, since Amaya is saying that she will be home in a week and a half anyways, and Tanya ends up stepping up. So Amaya kind of has a defeatist attitude and wants to fulfill other obligations. The Seven Rings of Saturn is the next challenge, where you have to gather the rings to put it on a car while the cars are driving in a circle, and I like this challenge, though they've done more dangerous versions of this challenge in future iterations, well after the season. Tanya is pissed off because she was in the middle of the girls performance wise and Amaya screwing up in a challenge now has her at the bottom and this would be the start of Tanya's downfall in the season. The guys win the challenge, Puck and Theo win the lifesaver and he uses it on Colin and the inner circle is Colin, Jamie and Mark and it's essentially the three of them in the inner circle for the rest of the season. And the inner circle for the women are Ellen, Emily and Ruthie. The women send home Amaya and the guys send home Yes. Ellen is pissing off a lot of the women at this point, and many of them do not trust her, where Tanya is also trying to calm her down, since the two of them have a close friendship. Yes was pretty unmemorable on the season, and with two relatively early boots and him not offering anything on a character point of view in either season, I see why this was, and still is, as I'm recording this, his last flagship season, and Amaya was relatively middle of the road as well, and it didn't seem like she could really keep up with the changes of the show either, with this also being her last season. People are tired of Rachel's negative attitude, and we see her complaining about some of the women saying that they can only be here for a week, and if they don't want to commit for the entire filming time, they should go home now instead of someone who really wants to be there. And this is clear foreshadowing not only for her departure in the episode, but how a lot of the women, even well after this, just kind of volunteer to leave. And some of this happened earlier in the season as well, and honestly, I agree with her 100% in this regard. The challenge is called Freeze Your Butt Off, where they have to sit on melting ice, and it's something similar to what they did in Rivals 3, but it's nowhere near as fun as it is, is in that season, since they're allowed to move on the ice sculpture block as well, but here you just sit in one spot. Dan knows that he is close to the bottom, so he needs to perform. The women win the challenge, and Ellen ends up winning the lifesaver, and she uses it to save Tanya, since James is close to the bottom... Is Emily's boyfriend, and Ellen doesn't want to boot Blair, who is from her season, so she can't save Dan due to all of the aforementioned that I mentioned. And Melissa gets borderline hypothermia from the challenge. Ayana ends up throwing the challenge to Ellen strategically, and the inner circle of Colin, Mark, and Theo are formed, and the inner circle for the women are Ruthie, Ellen, and Emily. Ellen speaks to Ayana about what to do, and Rachel feels confident, since she is nowhere close to being at the bottom of the scoreboard. The woman boots Rachel because they don't like her negative attitude, and despite her performance, or sorry, despite her performance and the guys boot Dan. Ayana really lays into Ellen and Ruthie for their choice, and Melissa notices that Emily is getting off Scott free for all of the bad strategic moves that are made. Rachel, in general, just didn't have a strong edit, but her elimination is very memorable, and she has the the inner circle is ugly and full of shit moment, where she wants, where she kind of rants against the women in the circle, but I do think her memorable elimination gave her a future season, and we saw what she did with that. Dan was pretty funny, and he had a lot of great comedic moments, so he was a standout compared to most of the men this season when it comes to personality, at least. Puck is ranting about how he's done, and his wife is stuck in Jamaica because she is not a U.S. citizen, and there are some visa issues. Puck comes to the cast with a machete, and he ends up leaving the show to get his wife and kid, though he vandalized a bunch of things in the house before leaving, which is just ridiculous, and it just shows how much of a liability he really is. Veronica wants revenge on Emily, who sent her home last season, and she did not like how Rachel 
was voted out and how it happened, which Anissa isn't agreeing with this. Because Puck left, Dan is brought back into the game. So now it is time to talk about Puck who is someone who I thought brought a lot of entertainment and drama in the season, especially compared to how boring a lot of the other guys were on the season. But it did get uncomfortable after a while, and after learning about the homophobia and violence on this real-world season, and the countless accounts of abuse that he engaged in over the years since the show, I became very uncomfortable with him, and I see why production realized that, or MSTV realized he was more of a liability than he was worth. And I see a lot of people in the fan base call him the proto bear. The next challenge is people mover, where you have to move the statuses of the people, sorry, the statues of the people of your gender into the front with the quickest time. And I thought there was a kind of just a meh at best challenge. The women win the challenge, and Ayana and Ellen win the lifesaver, and they end up saving Tanya, which is Ayana's choice. Ellen, Emily, and Ruthie are in the inner circle yet again, and they, as well as Ayana, talk about booting Anissa, who told some of the girls to partner with Emily to sabotage her so they could vote Emily out, and so she could be out of the inner circle. The women are annoyed that, with the information that she was just given, Emily is stuck on wanting Veronica out. Though, you could say that it was convenient that they mentioned this Anissa stuff now, though Anissa said it quite a few rounds ago. The inner circle for the men is Colin, Jamie, and Mark, and they are, of course, going to boot Dan yet again. Anissa and Dan are voted out. For someone who has done the most seasons out of the women, Anissa was very unmemorable and forgettable here in her debut. But it will be interesting to see how she involved or how she evolves from here compared to her less than stellar debut. Though she blames Emily for her boot, though it was mainly the other woman. I don't have anything to say about Dan since I literally just talked about him. We have an update on Emily and James as they've been dating for a year and they're really enjoying Jamaica together. The challenge is called Battle of the Opposite Sexes where it is a trivia challenge of the other sex and if you get it wrong you have to take off a piece of clothing a lot of the women refuse to take part in the challenge since it is more demeaning of women but james decides to not compete so he supports his girlfriend though he ends up changing his mind and yeah this challenge is definitely unbalanced in regarding the women since they have more parts that would be exposed and this is something that they definitely would not do nowadays on any show really and it's pretty exploitative. The men unshockingly win, and Jake wins the life shielder, which he uses on Blair. The inner circle for the women is Ellen, Ruthie, and Veronica. Emily dropped to the bottom because she did not participate in the challenge, and she is now blaming the woman for participating and also blaming her boyfriend for changing his mind. So she's just not taking accountability for the fact that she chose not to do something and it cost her. Veronica wants to get her revenge on Emily, but the three women agreed to booting Tanya, especially since Tanya told the other woman that she was leaving around this point anyways, though Ellen doesn't want her to leave. Tanya and Jake are voted out of the house. It is interesting seeing Tanya so positive, likable, calm, and also being a voice of reason while getting along with a lot of the women, which will definitely change as the seasons go on. But apparently she did this as a rehabilitation move due to her coming off as homophobic and racist on her real world season, from what I've been told and researched. I don't remember a damn thing about Jake, who also essentially quit because he was homesick, and I see why this was his first and only season. Eric is finding out that his sister is in the hospital not doing well, and James and Emily made up. The women really start bashing Veronica because she is so negative, and a lot of the women know that they are on the line for rejecting to partake in the last challenge, so they are at the bottom, or close to. Apparently, they are now in phase two of the challenge now, because they made it to the second half of the season, where it is everyone against themselves in the challenges, so no pairs anymore. The challenge is called Leaky River, where they have to walk across the triangle wires to go across the river. The men win the challenge, and Eric wins the lifesaver, which he 
does not use at all, but dedicates it to his sister. And the inner circle for the men are, yet again, Colin, Jamie, and Mark. And like I mentioned earlier, it hasn't changed and it won't change for the rest of the season. And the inner circle for the women are Ellen, Melissa, and Ruthie. Christina and Theo are voted out of the house. I literally do not remember a single thing about Christina, and I am not shocked whatsoever that she never came back. But I feel like this is the case with a lot of the earlier boots, though we're at the point of the season where no one is in early boot anymore. Theo had a joyful enough personality, despite not being present on the season, but I hope he makes more of a mark on the consulate. Emily is very insecure about James and Veronica having sex in the past, which Ayana and Melissa talk about in their confessionals, so you know that the three of them are going to be a big part of the narrative this episode. The challenge is called Stairway to Heaven, where you have to climb a ladder. Jamie wins the lifesaver. The inner circle is the untouchable Colin, Jamie, and Mark. And for the women, it is Emily, Ruthie, and Ellen. Emily heavily campaigns to the woman to boot Veronica and pushes the Veronica is negative narrative, which isn't necessarily false, but it's not affecting the thing. But neither one of the women really agree to it. But if the other women feel this way, which is what Emily is stating, they have to go on. They have to go with it, and it needs to be done. And this is the issue with Ruthie and Ellen overall. They have so much power, but they don't have the contriction to actually be a leader and make the moves that need to be made. So they are very easily manipulated and steered to do whatever they need to do. And I think it's partially why Ruthie ends up suffering in future seasons, since the strategic element and the political element is just something she just doesn't get. Cyrus is voted out, and so is Veronica, though Jamie tries to save her, but because it happened after the vote, the life saver is null and void, since he didn't state it before she was eliminated. Cyrus did not get much focus this season, but he had more humor and personality than a lot of the men on his team in comparison. Veronica was an interesting person to watch this season, since while she did not get full on villainous this season, she was scared from or she was scarred from being booted first last season and was trying to navigate things a lot. Though you do see why she eventually went the route that she went into in future seasons. The girls are tired of losing and some of them feel like the challenges have not been fair, which is a flaw with this format in general. The battle of the sexist format. Ruthie and Ellen talk about how there needs to be a leader, and neither of them wants to do it, pretty much because they're scared as hell, and it shows why Emily led them into making poor choices. The challenge is called Collision Course, which is essentially a shooting laser challenge, and this challenge is really great to watch. And the guys immediately come up with a good plan to boot Ayana, since they know she has the most experience with stuff like this, and then they target Ellen and Ruthie, afterwards for being the power players. Ayana is frustrated since she tried to be a leader and come up with a strategy and she ends up arguing with Genesis or maybe it was Anne but one of those two especially and Ruthie is trying but failing to be the middle woman. James ends up winning the life circle though it doesn't change the inner circle with the guys whatsoever and the inner circle for the women are Ellen, Emily, and Ruthie. Ayana is over the experience and is turned off with how the women handled the situation. So she wants to go and she speaks to the inner circle about it. Ayana gets her wish regarding being voted out and Blair is also voted out as well. I did enjoy Blair's cockroach arc throughout the season, which made him stand out more compared to the other men. I would have liked to have seen him in another season, but it really isn't too much of a loss. And he was one of the few men who stood up for Ellen regarding Puck, so I do appreciate him there. Ayana is such a unique person and has such an essence to her that is just made for reality TV. And I really liked how she performed with the with the women, not only just politically and socially, but also in the challenges. Though she was never in the top, and it's a shame that she decided to leave here, since I think she could have made it to the end, or at least to the semi-finals otherwise. She was just over the foolishness of everyone, and she was calmer in the season, despite being very Ayana. Shane is talking about feeling out of his comfort zone in the game and with his team, and apparently he told some of the men earlier that he wants to leave. The challenge is called Spider-Mon, where they have to climb the mesh to grab a doll, but they, nor the doll, can drop. 
And overall, it's just, just a meh challenge. Eric is disqualified for dropping the doll, and he is in danger of going home, despite Shane wanting to go home. Genesis also did cues for dropping the doll, and she knew that she needed this to survive the round. Shane ends up winning the lifesaver, which gives him a boost who wants to continue in the game. The voteouts are not shocking whatsoever, with Eric and Genesis getting voted out. But Shane throws a wrench in the plans with saving Genesis, and this is kind of the start of her cockroaching herself a few more rounds. Due to this, the woman deliberates for 30 minutes, and Anne decides to throw in the towel. Both of them are middle-of-the-road presences, where I don't think that they were invisible or outright duds. They aren't one of the stronger personalities or presences on the season, so they're just kind of decent. I see why this is Anne's last season, and Eric is someone that's pushed so hard by MTV, and I don't really get why, unless I am missing some historical context. I know he was on the first season of The Real World, if I remember correctly. He hosted two seasons ago... No, he hosted last season, actually, and he's kind of akin to Mark, but I just don't really think he has what it takes to be as prominent as a Mark. James and Shane are at the bottom, and they both know that they have to compete to make it through this round. The challenge is called Human Aquarium, where you have to lie down in the water, and whomever lasts the longest wins. Survivor has done this challenge a thousand times, but they throw a bunch of sea creatures into the water to distract them here. The men lose the challenge with Antoine winning the lifesaver, which he does use on Shane. With Actually, no, the men win the challenge. Anyways, James and Shane are tied after the challenge, and we do see both of them campaign for their spots to see who should be saved, and the other men have no idea what to do, and everyone knows that Genesis is going home. James was still pretty annoying, but he was a lot more tolerable, in a season, while still having some of his douchiness, though his showmance with Emily still wasn't musty TV. A part of me wishes that he did another season, since he does have personality, but in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't much of a loss that he never came back after this. Emily decides to quit because her boyfriend was booted, but she also mentions that her sister is going through a lot, as her sister needs her. An issue with this is that she told some of the other women that if James was not eliminated, she would stay, despite what her sister is going through. So it kind of heavily implicates that she's full of shit. Honestly, this is utterly pathetic of Emily, but after the mess she caused during her last few seasons, it is fitting for her challenge journey to end in this manner. She brought so much to the season, though, and I liked how villainous, selfish, and just utterly petty she was with everything she did throughout the season, and there's really no logic behind her moves on a gameplay point of view. But the other women were foolish, and they let her run them, so I don't blame her for capitalizing. For the second episode in a row, Genesis is spared from going home, and Lori is finally in the inner circle with Emily leaving. Shane and Genesis know that they are going to go home if they do not perform well in this challenge. The challenge is called Razor's Edge, where they have to slide a scooter across a thin path, which is very high in the air. Honestly, I don't like this challenge at all, and it was pretty boring to watch as well. Ruthie is DQ'd, but it's not going to make much of a difference, and Antoine wins again for the guys, with the life shield being won by him again, which he uses on Shane, who ends up rejecting it. Genesis and Shane are voted out of the season, and you can just tell that Shane was over the experience by this point, and he also knew that he wasn't one of the best competitors, so he felt like he wasn't as deserving. Genesis did have her moments throughout the season, and I see why she was given a second season after this, and I did find her cockroach storyline throughout the last three episodes to be kind of funny as well. Shane definitely became more prominent and interesting during his last few episodes of the season, causing him to be a lot more memorable than a lot of the other newbies, and even some of the other veterans by this point in the show's history. So I see why he came back. It is interesting seeing young Shane here, and not the terror of late-era Shane. Since I'm familiar with that one, and I started watching the show during his later seasons, 
Laurie knows that she's in danger of getting booted, and Antoine knows that he's in danger as well. The penultimate challenge is maximum velocity, where you have to drop down a rope and stop at a certain point. If you are disqualified... Sorry, you are disqualified if you do not drop at a certain point, or you miss out on the time. And they also did this challenge as recently as Battle for a New Champion, so Season 39. Due to the weather, right as they're about to do the challenge, they have to postpone it for the next day. Anyways, they do the challenge, and Ruthie wins the lifesaver and the challenge for the woman, while also getting a car. The results are pretty predictable, with Melissa and Antoine going home, since it is a sudden death round. Duh. Since there's no need to have a deliberation where there's only one other choice outside of the inner circle, which has three people. I really enjoyed Melissa throughout the season. She had a lot of personality, had no issue getting into drama, and I found her to be very refreshing. It's really a shame that she never returned to do another season, but she's up there for being a very memorable one-season wonder. Antoine being European and dealing with the culture clash between himself and the Americans was interesting, though nowhere near as interesting as Christian from season four, though he himself wasn't really memorable outside of that. I am definitely fine with him being a one and done. Everyone is given a hint about the final challenge, and they are realizing what it is, where they have to build some sort of puzzle. The final challenge is called It Takes Three, where they have to walk as a unit in wooden skis, and the guys are ahead of the girls for this part. They then realize what the bricks are for, and the girls do catch up to the guys who have been there for a while. They then have to climb a mesh and create a bridge between the telephone poles, and the woman beats the men, until the men see the woman's puzzles. Mark makes it very clear that he doesn't regret cheating, and it makes sense why the challengers in future seasons knock over their pulses once they complete it. The men beat the woman in this regard, and they end up winning this season. I really do not remember a single thing about Lori throughout the season, and that's really not a good thing for someone who made it to the final of the season. Ellen was arguably the star of the season, with her bold and confrontational personality mixed with her lack of strategy made for a very fun watch, and made her very fun to watch. Seeing Ruthie dominate and getting used to the more strategic elements of the season was cool, even if she herself was not the most dynamic person overall. Honestly, the dynamic between the guys were boring as hell this season, and these three guys are a major proponent of it. It makes sense why Colin was a one and done, since he really gave nothing outside of his injury, but props to him for being in the inner circle the entire season. James was a bit more memorable, as he became more prominent in the narration. What's his name? Jamie. I think his name's Jamie, actually. I don't really recall any character moment with Mark this season, though I was shocked to find out that he was married during the season, and it's clear that it didn't last long. Because he's a good narrator and more charismatic than the other men, partially due to his hosting experience, it is kind of easy to forget about the boring strategy and lack of character that the men, including him, had in the season. Now, on to the reunion of the season, since I could actually find the reunion for the season and I couldn't for last season. There are some discussion pertaining to the unfairness of some of the challenges, which were in favor of the men, which Ellen specifically mentions, and the producers allowing the men to cheat off the women. I think it was Lori who mentioned this as well. Mark mentions that they were beating the woman by 40 minutes, and they edited it to make it look close, so it really wasn't much of a factor in their win. People explained that David spit back at Puck already, which we know this was done when they filmed the intro, and the cast thought that the situation was over and done with, so they were tired of it when David just continued just dragging it out. Veronica's vote off was discussed, and Laurie explains how Ellen and Ruthie should have done what they wanted since they had the numbers, and they all talk about Emily's foolishness. It also is noted that Emily and James decided to bail on the reunion since it's clear that Emily couldn't justify any of the bullshit that she did during the season, and I think it was kind of a weak move, but I'm assuming that they had to have been invited since they both made it far in the season, unless I'm given different information indicating that they weren't invited. Overall, the reunion is a typical early reunion with nothing really popping off.
In conclusion, I did find Battle of the Sexes 1 to be a very fun, thrilling season, though I do think that it was mainly the women who made it exciting, as I was I've already discussed how boring the men and their strategy were in the season, with a few exceptions. They really paced the season out well with having an elimination in every single episode, not doing a bunch of to be continued. Though you definitely can tell that a lot of them didn't really care about the game, since many people just volunteered to leave, or they kind of quit, or they asked to be voted out throughout the season. And you can definitely tell that Bonham and Murray and MTV couldn't handle editing a cast that is this large, since so many of the casts are just virtual nothings. But luckily, the ones that stood out really stood out. Overall, this is a season that you get entranced in very easily. It's a very quick, easy, and fun watch. And seeing the format of the show continue to build to become what we eventually know it as is really exciting. I didn't really mind the fact that there are no eliminations in this season and it was just before outs, but obviously the inclusion of eliminations is very important. I also think that we're missing some key people that would become notable in this era, as a lot of the people last season decided not to do this season. And I'm wondering if it was an issue based on when they decided to film these two seasons. That's something that I would like to know more of, or I would have to do more research of. Anyways, the next two seasons officially has eliminations, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting into those. Thank you all for watching my content overall, and I'm going to be posting more on both this channel and the other channel that is in the description. You can follow all that you need to follow, and I'll be back with more content soon. Take care. Anyways, with this season, sorry, I forgot to add this in, it's definitely higher than the last season, but I don't know if by the time I finished Era 1, if it's going to be really that high.